Hello everyone, my name's Colin, welcome to Onion Skin, and this is the Cutout Animation Series. In the last couple of videos we drew, coloured, and prepped the domestic killbot character for Cutout Animation in Harmony 12 Essentials, and, I, and a bit earlier than that we prepped the pieces of the character in Toon Boom Studio as well. However, we haven't set up the structural hierarchy yet. So in this video we're going to be taking all of the broken up pieces as you can see here, and placing them into the skeletal hierarchy, positioning the pivots and getting this guy completely ready for animation. So despite which version you're using, you can follow along in this video as well as the processes are very similar, but can be beneficial to see it in both versions. So pulling up the timeline, you can see all of the different layers. If you select the free transform tool here, as you flip through the layers, you can see where their position appears. So this leg would of course go, would have the upper leg on top and the lower leg underneath. At the moment, they're the wrong way around. So I'm gonna pick up left leg two, place it on top of left leg one. You see this line on the left, how it will be out to the side and then pop inwards like that. So when it's out to the left, it means it'll simply slot them next to one another. But if I roll it over the top, it will go inside. An arrow appears next to this layer, which lets us collapse it and you can see it's nested inside. What this means is they are now grouped together with the upper leg as the master. So with the free transform tool selected, I can pick up this upper leg and notice that the lower leg will move with it. However, if I select the lower leg, it will not move the top one because hierarchy, upper, lower, blah, blah. So let's do that as well with the right arm pieces. So right shoulder on top, right arm cables go under that, Right lower arm goes under that, right hand, right hand goes under that. And now on the left as well, so left shoulder, left arm cables, left lower arm, left hand, all good. Right leg goes under, right leg two goes under right leg one, hips goes underneath shirt. And if you watched that other video recently in Harmony 12, you remember that these face pieces are not a hierarchy, they don't chain downwards, they're all just features that exist on top of the head. So I'm going to create a peg by hitting the plus and going to type down to peg, OK. And it will create a blank peg for us here and we can select all of the head pieces, slot them underneath and there we go, the purple line appears indicating that the peg has something inside of it and the character is rigged up. So next I'm going to collapse all of these little arrows here. Uh, and order all of them from the back to the front as well. So we need the, lucky for us, everything is in the right order. Remember a quirk with Studio, however, is when you have a layer selected, it will automatically bring it. Remember a quirk with Studio is if you select a layer with the black arrow, it will automatically bring the artwork to the front. Uh, so don't get confused, nothing's broken. Go back to the free transform tool again and everything will be seen naturally as they are. Remember that drawings and layers in Toon Boom are very, very different things. So if it were a drawing on a piece of paper, the black arrow moves the actual pencil lines around on your page, whereas the free transform tool moves the page itself under the view of the camera. And we always use the free transform tool and never the white arrow. The white arrow does also move whole pages, but it moves things permanently, okay? So if you move something and realize you made a mistake, you have to undo, and if you don't have enough undos, you're stuck. But if you use the free transform tool, it will plant a keyframe as you move it. So if I move this left leg again, see how it puts a keyframe there? And if I've made a mistake, and I don't have enough undos to snap it back to how it went, I can just right click and go to remove keyframe and it'll snap back to the original position. No harm done. The white arrow does have its uses, but I recommend just not going anywhere near it. You'll save yourself a lot of stress. Okay, so the hierarchy is now set up, but the character is not ready for animation just yet. And now we're gonna be diving into a new territory, which I haven't covered in other videos yet, uh, is when we start animating it. So as I showed before, this is how the hierarchy is set up. If using the free transform tool, if I move this layer while on the right shoulder, whole lot moves, right? So if I wanna animate his hand moving up and say waving at the camera, I'd be wanting to use the rotate tool here. Grabbing, you see how uh, this rotation guide appears. I can grab this box and rotate it up. 
but the problem is it's not rotating on the point that I want. So what we need to do is go through each layer and position this rotation tool where we want that layer to rotate. So I'll put this one here and now it rotates on the shoulder just as we'd want it to. So right arm cables would be there, the kind of, there we go. Right arm lower, um, not quite. So you can see I'm testing it as I'm going, positioning it and then making sure that it rotates in the most appropriate way that I can. Uh, oops. And make sure you actually hit the points so it doesn't behave like a dum-dum. That'll do. And the right hand. See, notice that point zero is dead center in the middle of the screen. So you gotta move it down for each one. <laughs> Wrist. There we go. So now if I wanna animate him waving up to the camera, see that? Each piece will move on its own. Ta da! <laughs> You'll see down on the timeline these little arrows appear. So the upper arrow means that the rotation is being keyframed, that the rotation is being keyframed and animated, and I believe the red box means it is influencing a layer beneath it which is why these top three ones have it, but the hand doesn't, because it's at the end of the chain. Now this position, yeah, it does look a bit silly, uh, but remember, the animating doesn't end here. It's not a be and an end all skeleton. We can push it really far, as is, but there's also a lot of other tricks we can implement it to make the animation look believable and enticing, and overall more entertaining for your audience to watch. So I'm gonna select these four keyframes now. Go to remove keyframes, it all snaps back to its default position. I'm gonna work through every other layer and position its rotation point to its appropriate place. Okay, the pivot points are set up. I just realized a couple of other things that I'd like to pin together uh, as an afterthought is the shirt isn't connected to anything else. And if I'm moving that, I want his head and shoulders to follow suit, but I don't want the, see how the hips are currently moving with it? I don't want that. I want it to be able to move at the spine. So I'm gonna pull the hips out of the shirt and the, oh, how am I gonna do this? The right leg will go under the hips, the left leg will also go under the hips, so you see there, now underneath there. Right shoulder, left shoulder, they go under the shirt. And the whole thing with the shirt and its components underneath the hips. So now if I start rotating the shirt, it will take the arms with it but leave the legs alone. Of course, I'm missing the head. What's that peg called that for? That should be called head peg. That will go under the hips as, no, sorry. That'll go under the shirt as well. Did it? It did. Okay, now a problem arises from doing this because it's layered, it now means for this to be pinned to the hips, 
it's gone behind visually. So we need to find a way for it to still be pegged to this, but to appear in front of the artwork. So I'm afraid I must add in a bit of a disclaimer at this time. Uh, turns out my Toon Boom Studio license is not working, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is we're up to a point where I need to arrange these layers so that they're still layered the way that they are, but visually they are stacked up in the order they need to be in. Uh, I can achieve this effect in the same way using Harmony Essentials. So that's what I'm gonna do in the next part of this series. We'll be back over in Harmony Essentials again. I'm gonna show you the same steps of setting the pivot points up and getting the puppet all good, uh, but also this clever way of getting the layers the way that you want them to be. It's called 3D nudging. So thanks for understanding and I'll see you then. Thanks for coming by. I hope you got something out of it. If you got stuck somewhere or something was a bit tricky, or if you have an idea for something else you'd like to see in a video, uh, please let me know. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other stuff in those links just there. Whoa. But thanks again, and I'll see you again soon.